So let's answer the following question conceptually. Let's suppose that two balls with the same exact mass begin at the same exact height and travel without friction, without any sort of drag force. Now, one of the balls, let's call it ball number one, travels directly downward along the y-axis while the second ball moves along the following frictionless plane that makes an angle of theta with respect to the ground. Now, we want to answer these two questions. Which ball will have a larger velocity at the bottom, a larger speed at the bottom, and which one will get to the bottom first? Well, let's begin with the first question. Which object, which ball, will have a larger speed at the bottom? So, because we're dealing with a conservative system, because only conservative forces are acting on our object, that basically means that we have a conservation of mechanical energy. So the mechanical energy throughout our system, throughout motion, remains constant. So let's find what the energy is, mechanical energy, for ball number one and ball number two. Well, both of our objects begin with initial velocity of zero. So neither of the objects at the beginning have kinetic energy. They only have gravitational potential energy. And because both objects are found at the same exact height, h, above the ground, that means our total, our initial total mechanical energy will be exactly the same. So let's say it's E. So for ball number one, we have E equals mgh. And for ball number two, we have E equals mgh. So these values are identical. What about the final mechanical energy? Well, the final mechanical energy of the system will be exactly the same. It will remain at E. So these values represent the final mechanical energy of the system, and they're equal to the kinetic energies of the object because all the gravitational potential energy at the bottom has been transformed to kinetic energy, the energy of motion. So because the objects begin at the same exact height and under the same conditions, meaning they both have initial velocity of zero, at the end they will have the same exact velocity. So once again, the two objects will reach the same exact final velocity, final speed, because they will begin at the same exact height above the ground. Now, what about the second question? Which object will reach the ground first? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to think about which object has a higher acceleration. So both of these objects have constant acceleration, but notice object number two uh, has a smaller acceleration because it's 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of the angle theta. So object one, ball one, has a higher acceleration, so that means the rate of change of velocity will be higher for object number one than object number two, and so it will reach the final velocity faster than object number two. So ball one will have a higher acceleration than ball number two, and so will reach the velocity, the final velocity faster. So even though the two objects will have the same exact final velocity, they will have completely different time periods that will allow them to reach that final velocity.